Ah, uh, yay! BVR Thunder. We're we're doing B BVR Thunder. We're, we're 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 beyond visual ranging. We're doing some testing, and this is going to be a companion video to the SU twenty seven video because I like to put videos like close together that kind of pertain to the same thing, and I want to address this persistent idea that the MiG twenty nine SMT is secretly like this very very good uh, beyond a visual range fighter because. In truth, I don't think that it is. And by the end of this video, I think you guys are going to agree that you will also not think that it is. And the problem is, like, this idea persists from people that usually don't have the plane and that haven't really practiced with the plane. In theory, you can match up the R27ER having a range advantage over the AIM-120, and you can then use the R-77 to force it defensive and do yada, yada, yada. People like to theory craft all the time about how this would work out. And I'm going to show you guys how it works out in practice. The, the practical aspect is the range advantage of the R27ER when shot from the same aspect at the same altitude is not that much. The time to impact, if you paid attention to the timer there, the pit bull timer is much longer than the impact timer, about one second. That's not always the case. Sometimes it's up to four. It depends on who launched first. We're trying to launch the missiles at the same time, but th there's a timing thing here too. Even in the crank here, you can look at the timer. The first timer, 14 seconds is how long the missile has went pit bull between impact. After that, I've got a little bit over five and a half seconds before his missile impacts me. And this is around like a 50 kilometer launch. It's a little bit less than that. These missiles kind of top out around 50K at this altitude with like any kind of like slight defensive maneuvering what we did is we went and we tested very slight defensive maneuvers so basically like launch notch one direction go that direction see what happens because in theory you should be able to put the target at the 85 degree gimbal limit and you will outrange their missile because their missile has to fly further to you versus your missile and you can also chaff and flare to notch them at the same time it, this does work about 50% of the time. About 50%. It is a very, very narrow gap. It is not something that is extremely actionable. It is not something I would, like, on the surface, even going into this, that I would rely on. And the problem is that performance actually matters, though, because in testing, we're gimping ourselves. We are limiting ourselves to 7,500 meters, because I'm, I'm figuring that some people want to be at like 6,000, like below contrails, uh, to not be seen, and some people want to be at 10,000. So we'll, we'll split the difference to get a general idea. I'm not doing um, a frame-by-frame -frame analysis or anything like that. I'm just trying to get like general data, a general feeling of like what's the range gap, what can I do to maybe come up with a technique that can beat Butters. Because Butters is like, he's pretty good. He's nothing, like, he's not really like the beyond visual range expert of everything. Like, none of us have practiced this that much, but I mean, it's an F-15C. Like, it's it's pretty straightforward. The reason that people don't really, like, care about BVR stuff that much, they're, like, at a higher level, is like, if both sides play it right, it just goes to the merge, and then it's just a dogfight with one guy starting a defensive position, one guy starting an offensive position. That That's what it boils down to with the way that things scale in War Thunder. But we're going to try to do an honest-to-God representation of, like, what typically would probably happen and we're still testing missiles we got tac view and you're going to see in tac view that sometimes the thing happens that that people say is going to happen sometimes it doesn't like right here we can see the radar and the missile have picked up chaff he is full notched his missile is hot to me and i think that hits that does hit so sometimes it doesn't really work in our favor to just blindly guide an R-27 ER in. We're always trying to balance the decision whether or not to abandon the missile or not. Because right here, it actually works. He gets hit. His missile flies slightly behind us. We time the missile launches slightly wrong. And it's kind of anyone's game. And that's in a limited circumstance. That's literally in the same altitude saying that we're not going to go cold to each other. We're not going to utilize the full advantage of the missiles that we have once we get rid of like the testing rule set the it, it's out the window because what happens is 
with the 29 SMT, the radar is limited to about 45 degrees down, and it means that you can't, like, crank to the notch or crank to your limit, your gimbal limit, nearly as quickly. You're likely to lose the target and then have to relock it. If you can't relock it, then you're not going to get anything. Like, right there, I shot my missile, and my idea is that I'm going to go cold. I want to outrange his stuff. I've got 20 seconds to relock him. If I can relock him with the 27 ER, maybe I can prank him and maybe I can kill him. But as I said in the last video, I, I've tried this before. He already knows that this is a thing that I can try to do. And I've got the radar angled. I've got it angled to where I think he's going to be. And I, I try to pick him up and it doesn't lock. And now I have to go full defensive. But is it going to work? Let, well, let's let's find out. Um, I don't think it's going to. I've got the missile 90 degrees off. I've got another one coming in. I've got his controls. I know where he's at at least. And I'm climbing again because I think I can relock him, shoot a 77. If I can shoot the 77 and have it pull in and then turn away, if I do it very, 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 very quickly, maybe I get away with it. But in that case, I didn't get away with it. Like, in that case, I should have went full defensive. But if I go full defensive, I'm giving my tail to a plane with better missiles, better maneuverability than I do. So being full defensive is uh, kind of a losing point of view as far as like beyond visual range duels go. Or at least if you look at things like on a perfectly flat map. If you if I go into like a canyon of like, there's one that's like off to my right that like really, really likes to eat missiles because it has like ne very, very nice steep walls. But th that's like, that's a map knowledge thing. That's not like, my plane's better thing. Same time, I'm trying to relock him. I get him relocked. I've got his missile notched. Maybe mine goes in. I'm not shooting mine yet. I don't want to shoot mine at a huge angle off. I'm going to turn back in. And I'm going to try to shoot one across and then get the hell down. And if you notice, if you look at the speed, I'm at Mach 0.78. That's slow as fucking hell. That means the missiles I just launched are a lot less viable than the ones that he has. Because I guarantee you, if you look at the replay, if I went to TAC view, the pseudo TAC view, he's going faster than Mach 1 probably the whole entire time. I'm going to turn down. I'm going to turn away. I get a 77 off. I'm trying to get him defensive. I'm trying to get him to turn away, get a little bit of distance. But I'm down to one missile. He's probably down to two. If we both had sequential launches... I have six, he has eight, and I have doubled up my missiles, because when I double up the missiles, I want the 77 and the ER to go together, so that if I have to go full defensive, if he keeps flying blindly straight, he'll fly into the 77. That's one of the theories that I had, of like, maybe I can double them up together, and one will force a situation with the other that'll give me something to work with. And it does, it works in the sense it gives you something to work with. Right here, though, like, he can't find me on radar, so he goes full defensive, and I run out of missiles. I'm, a, I'm down to one. I shoot it. It's gone. Now I have to do the thing that I don't want to do, and I have to notch his missile. And if you're paying attention, what aspect is the AIM-9M good at? If you answered 90-degree side aspect, congratulations, you win a prize. The prize is... Uh, you, you lose the game. But I have to let him merge behind me at basically a positional advantage and then try to reverse him. And I'm in a big 29 SMT. This thing's not actually, this is not good. But I've practiced a lot with this plane. I practice a lot with the 29s. I've practiced a lot with the 27s. So I can kind of sort of make it work sometimes. Like I can pull some shit out of my ass and make it work. And the F-15C... Because Butters is not experienced in it right now, because it is like a good bit heavier than the 15A. If he pulls the same amount in the 15C as he's pulled in the A, he can put himself on a disadvantage. At the same time, like I shouldn't be in this position. And having to rely on getting a gun kill in the 29 SMT to win, that's it's not very good. That's not a it's not a very good scenario to be in. It is not one that I would recommend that you rely on. Being the 
best MiG-29 SMT gunfighter in the game uh, still means you probably lose the majority of your gunfights. That's not counting anything else. But he runs out of fuel. We manage to do it. We pull it off. We pull, we, we pull some shit out of our ass. And it's, it's not going to be the first time. We're going we're gonna to keep doing that. So we go to the next round, and I'm doing something a little bit different. I'm trying to do an F-pull whatever maneuver kind of thing of like, I'm going to put him in the gimbal limit at the start, wait for him to get close, shoot my missile once he's close enough, and then go to the opposite gimbal limit. Because the idea is that as I'm angled 90 degrees off, it's going to take him longer to pick me up on radar, number one. But number two, when he shoots his long-range missile, it's going to overlead me in the other direction because it's thinking flying Mach 1 in one direction. I'm basically going to do a 180-degree turn, go the other direction, and I should out-energy his missile. I should have the ability to spoil his missiles. In practice, um, it, it's, not re it's not really helping. The fact that I can't really relock the radar like at will or can't do it quickly enough means that I am defensive in positions I don't want to be defensive in. It means that the idea that I'm going to lock, launch, unlock, defense, uh, relock, and then guide in the missile as it like got itself closer is not going to be practical. He keeps the pressure up. He has eight AM rams. I only have like two and four, and I'm full defensive. We're basically more or less in the same situation as we were in before, but even in a worse position because he could climb behind us which means the no escape zone for his missile grows even larger. We're going to try to do an HMDIR shot. We don't have anything on the RWR. We're going to try to get the 77, and then we pick up the missile. It pops up on the RWR, and then we die. We try to do something cheeky. We try to do something where we get a counter launch as fast as possible, and it, did, it, it didn't work. And that's going to be... That's not really uncommon. I don't know if the RWR on this thing is like bad blind spots etc i haven't like I, i'm not doing a 3d model like we're not we're not going that in depth but you can see from the footage that hey at the time that i went to recommit i thought i had defeated all the missiles because the last missile was not on the rwr do the same thing go to f pull shoot a missile shoot another missile same thing doubling up the 27 er with the 77 so that if he does decide to stay flying at us and we don't get him relocked on the second maneuver or if we drop lock that the 77 will hopefully take over and keep him at least a little bit of pressure up and we're doing something a little bit different this time we're being a little bit more gentle we're trying to not get to that 40 degree mark on the radar so we can keep him locked the whole time and we, we kind of do the thing that we want to do or at least we we think that we do but same thing, we're going to like try to cut across, shoot, and then go down, and it it's not going to work. We are a little bit too hot to this missile. We think that we might have it out energied, but we're not threading that needle correctly. That needle is not threaded correctly, so we die again. And this is the problem, is it is much, much, much easier to thread that needle in the F-15C and the F-16C to break your lock, go cold, get back into a position where you can kind of freely shoot again that you don't have the ability to really do in this fight. You don't have the ability to really guide the 27 ERN as reliably as people say that you should. So we're doing the same thing. We're mixing it up a little bit. We're trying to go down even further because if we drag his missile to thicker air, we have a chance of energying it. Now, we got to pay attention to the radar screen because he does notch it, and when that light like flashes, we got that like bright green lock, that means we're probably locked on shaft. That is kind of what I've concluded, but we do get him defensive. The thing that is doing the work is the combination of having two missiles together, 27 ER and the 77. But we turn back in, wrong time, we die again, we cope, we seize, we die. That is going to be, that. that's... That is the most likely outcome. If you're trying to win in the BVR terms in this plane from a pure BVR perspective, I don't think it works. I don't think it's going to work. Same thing, go to F-Pole, and I'm skipping the climb sequence. So he can freely climb further up than we can. We're trying to launch our missile above Mach to try to maximize the range, to try to maximize the viability. We cut across, 
And this time we're going to do something a little bit different. We're going to basically make a false pass for the first missile because obviously the 27 ER is not working this time. We'll cut back across and go the opposite direction, hopefully to decoy some of his missiles. We'll get the 27 and then we'll get the 77 off. Got him a little bit closer. Hopefully the back and forth has like confused some of his missiles. And then we're going to go straight down and we're going to try to get to a spot where we can relock him. And this is the problem. We got the we got the radar angled. Eh, it's kind of like even the horizon. We got it up. We're trying to, we're trying to search for him. And his missiles are are pit bull. So we we have basically kind of lost the viability of our missiles here. And at this point, we are more or less pure defensive. Um, we're looking at the RWR. We're waiting for stuff to pop up. We're looking at what he does and. Apparently, our stuff got close enough to force him to turn off, and then we've learned to expect the last second AIM-120s to come in, and th that's what we got. We got giant flashing RWR sign. We go the opposite direction. We know he's going basically uh, behind us and spamming missiles at us, but we're defensive here. This is the position that you don't want to have to fight from. He has more energy. He has the ability, like... If he just wants to, like, shoot all of his missiles and just go back to base from this position, he could he could do that. Like, he doesn't actually have to follow through with this. We do the IR to PD trick. We're going to shoot the 77. And uh, it looks like we shot a missile instead. We shot at a missile and not him. And we merge. We're, we're, back, in, we're back in the position we don't want to be in. We dodge the head-on shot. And this is, this is where I'm saying, like, hey... This is not what you want to have to rely on. This is not where you want to be in the 29 SMT. We are in a pure BFM fight, and this is a plane that does not do BFM well. I do okay in it, because I've spent a lot of time in it, do manual controls, try to get the spin shot right away. Don't get it. It's very close. It's very close. Yeah, this is like a very, very cinematic thing. Like, look, look how fucking cool that is. That just looks cool as hell. We spin... Instead of canceling the spin, we're going to basically make the spin faster to try to be a little bit above. But, like, this is hopium. This is this is hope. But we're going we're gonna to get the hope. We find him, get the manual, and it, this is it. He tries to ditch the rate, and I, I gorilla pull, rock the nose, hit him, and win. That's, that is not a clean win. If that is not something that I would consider like that is not a clean win. If that misses, that's a loss. Like straight up. And the same thing. We're going head on. 77, uh, 27 ER. I'm gonna try to get a little bit closer. Try to build up a little bit more energy. Um, basically, the problem that I'm having is we're dropping lock, and then we're not reacquiring lock. So let's let's try something else. Let's try to. Uh, get them off base and we're going to kind of like call the bluff of the uh, aim 120s that basically like eh, well we can we can get close enough that we can shoot two volleys of missiles before really having to to defend against any of his and let's see how that works same thing trying to not drop lock we drop lock his missiles force us defensive and we're going to try to do like a circle with the idea that we're extending the range of his missiles. Our missile is hopefully still on its way where we can relock with the 27 and maybe it gets close. But the reason we launch two is like we can get the spacing. Maybe the first one flies past, but maybe by the time he gets there, by the first time the first one has flew past, the second one isn't quite there. Maybe that throws him off. And we're going to cut across. We're going to shoot another one. And at this point, nothing's hit, and what we should do is just basically go uh, full defensive. And that's kind of what we're setting up for. We're trying to get them relocked and reacting to the RWR. React to the RWR, get the missile to 90 degrees, chaff, flare, all the good stuff. Turn back in, trying to pick them up, and uh, let's see how it works. Try to get the HMD PD, and 
we thought he might be out of missiles. And uh, it turns out that he wasn't. And we die. And, and that's that's how 29 SMT versus F-15C is probably going to go for most people.